All right, guys, so technical analysis. Before we can continue with the video, we have to understand what it is. It's nothing more than the study of historic price patterns in the market to help determine future behavior. I like to use, for example, price action. Price action is a part of technical analysis. Now, before you get confused and everything, I'm gonna break it down so you, it makes complete sense here, guys. So technical analysis, let's say you're looking at a sweater here. Your favorite sweater is gonna cost a lot less in the summertime than in the wintertime. It's obvious, right? A lot of people don't wear sweaters in the summertime. They wear it in the wintertime. So the stores will mark the price up because you're more likely to buy it in the wintertime. And then even the manufacturer who sells the cotton and the materials to the stores may charge them more if they were to purchase it in the wintertime than the summertime. And they will pass that cost on over to you. That's it. And so in order to look at that data, we already know that as common sense. We put it on a chart so that we can actually visually see it. And on that chart, we typically use candle charts, okay? And candle charts are simply a graph, for example. We see where price has been for a particular sweater, for example, in December last year, and it's comparable to December this year. It's usually at the same price. So we use that as part of technical analysis, which is called price action. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Here are some examples of a candle chart here. So here's one here, we're looking at the Great Britain pound and United States dollar. Now notice here at the bottom, we have a timestamp, okay? 1300, this is military time. You can change it to however you want. Sometimes you will see months and dates here. For example, I'm gonna look at the monthly chart and we can see here like September, October, what price is done, November. And if we look here on the right side, this was the actual price, okay? So we see 1.06, for example, that means a dollar and six cents. And as we go up, it means a dollar and 12 cents. So that's all it means. This is only a graph here. It's like a backwards L graph where we have the price on the left side and then the dates at the bottom here. And we know what happened to this currency at specific dates and the time. So we use dates and price to determine exactly what's going to happen. So we use technical analysis to determine when to buy. We use technical analysis to determine when to sell because we profit from both and when to get out of the market. Very simple. So that's all this is, is to determine what happened and when and for how much. So in order to do that, let's dissect the anatomy of a candlestick because that's imperative to trading. We have to know how a candlestick is formed in order to really understand technical analysis. Now, if you are an experienced trader, you know what candlesticks are. I want you guys to stick with it as well because sometimes this will help refresh your mind and maybe something you may not know that we may touch on. Now, before we do that, we use some good graphics here. And because of that, we wanna make sure that we educate you guys the best way we can. And so the graphics here are here to help you. So I would like for you to smash that like button if you can, subscribe if you haven't, and share this because this allows other people to see this video and notice the video. And by doing that, we appreciate that and it'll help us to make more content like this. If you're subscribed already, you already know what's coming. We like to go in detail and to make sure that you thoroughly understand what's going on. So the anatomy of a candlestick right here. So a candlestick is a visual representation of price movement within a specific amount of time. The body represents open and close of price. The wicks illustrate the highest and lowest price has reached within a specific amount of time. And the color of the candle represents if price opened and closed higher or lower than the previous candle. Now I know that's a lot. It can be confusing, especially if you're a new trader, but I promise you, wait for the illustrations because I'm gonna break it down to you. And I promise you by the end of the segment, you will completely understand how a candlestick is formed, which is the beginning of technical analysis. Let's go ahead and get into it. So look at these two illustrations. These are both candles. They're shaped differently. They have different colors. One have one wick, the other has two wicks. So the green candle tells us where price has went. And then look at the wicks here. That's the highest that price has gone. And the bottom wick is where the lowest is price has gone. Now look at the red candle. The red part is the body and the top is the top wick. Now notice this doesn't have a bottom wick. That's completely fine. Every candle does not have to have two wicks. As a matter of fact, there are candles that have no wicks at all. They're rare, but there are candles that have no wicks. Stick with me. I'm going to show you an awesome illustration I think will help you. Let's talk about OHLC. As a trader, you may see open, high, low, and close. That's what that means. Open means open price is where the candle first began. So look at the green candle and look where it's marked open. That's where price has started from. 
The close means that's when price stopped at within a specific time frame. And then the highest, the highest is price is gone. And then the low is the lowest where price is gone. The same for the red candle. All right. The H means the highest price is gone. The L is the lowest where price has been. And then finally, close of price is the final price in which a candle had completed before it began to move on to the next candle. So let me show you this awesome illustration to help you understand this a little bit more clearly. All right, guys, so we have a pretend chart here. We're looking at the 30 minute chart, the 30 minute time frame. We're looking at the Canadian dollar versus the Swiss franc. And on the right, you see the price here, okay? Now let's look at the anatomy of the candle, okay? A candle starts, and let's say it's moving up here. All this is saying is that price right here is currently at 70 cents or 0 0.70, okay? And as it moves up, it's representing the price on the right side. Now, why is this candle green? It's green because it's currently higher than when it originally opened. So I'm gonna get my text tool here and type opened. And open simply means where it originated from. All right, so price is here. This is where it originated from when the candle started forming. And it's green because it's higher than when it originally opened. Now let's say for instance, price starts to move down. As price moves down, you will see a candle wick exposing. Okay, this is called a wick, also known as a shadow. This tells us this is the highest price has been within a 30 minute time frame. Now remember, this candle is all forming within 30 minutes. So I'm gonna get my text tool and put high. This tells us how high it's been within 30 minutes. And let's say price drops, comes down, and goes below the open. Now what happens when price goes below the open? The candle turns red. All right, so whenever price is above when it originated, it's green. Whenever it's below, it's red, okay? And it continues to dip. Now let's say price starts to pull up a bit. Now remember, we're still on a 30 minute time frame. If price pulls up a bit, what happens? A wick begins to form. Here's our wick here. And then we're gonna mark low because this is as low as price has been within 30 minute time frame, okay? And then let's say the 30 minute is up. This is where price closes at. So the bottom of that candle is where it closed at, and it closed at 68 cents here, okay? Now, right when it closes, so I'm gonna move this over, and the 30 minute time frame is up, a new candle begins to form. And let's say this new candle drops below. It's red because it is lower than when it originally opened. So I'm gonna grab my text tool, type open, and let's say it starts to pull back up. What happens? If it pulls back up, you will see a wick expose. And if it goes higher than when it opened, it's going to turn green. And it's green again because it is higher than when it opened. So I'm gonna grab my text tool here, type low, and let's finish looking at how this candle plays out. Let's say it goes all the way up here. I want you to tell me what price is candle currently at right now. Look on the right side, this is our graph here, okay? So if you guess 75 cents or 0 0.7500, you're absolutely right. This is where current price is at right now and within this 30 minute time frame. And let's say price pulls back a bit. If price pulls back, you'll see a wick exposed and let's say it ends right here. I'm gonna get my text tool here. I'm gonna put high because this is how high it's been within 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna grab my text tool again and type close because this is when price closed after the 30 minute is over and it begins a new candle. That's the complete anatomy of a candlestick. Now, in order to really grasp it, we're gonna look at a real chart in real time and look at the one minute time frame because I want you guys to see how it transitions really quickly. Notice the wicks, how high it's been and notice the color of the body. As a matter of fact, let's look at the Canadian dollar and the Swiss franc, just like we did on our pretend chart. All right, guys, so we're here at the Cat Chef and look at this candle here it's white i have mine's white because price is above where it currently opened at okay so let's continue to look at it. i'm going to zoom in just so we can see it and we can see that price is moving pretty slow right now but we see our wick here this tells us how high it's been within a one minute time frame you even notice our timer here at the bottom it currently says 34 seconds and 33. now it dropped and it turned red because price is lower than when it opened and let's see what happens here. It's dropping. This is how high it's been. And it's dropping. We have 
20 seconds left before it ends. Look at the bottom of this wick here. That means that price has gone that low and it pulled up a bit. We have 10 seconds left and let's look at it here. And we can see that price is currently at 69 cents. Oh, it dropped down to 69 cents, 0.186. And now a new candle formed and it's red because it's lower than when it originally opened. All right, so let's look at one of these random candles here. And I'm gonna tell you the history of it without even being there, okay? That's the purpose of the candle. One is to tell you where you can possibly buy or sell, but it gives you the history, okay? So right here, I know where price has opened at, okay? So price opened right here at the bottom, looking at this white candle. And let me get my cursor right. Okay, it opened right here. The reason why I know it opened is because it's white, okay? For me, I changed my chart to white for when price goes up and red when it goes down. And it's white because it's shot above where it originally opened. If it was red, it would be lower than when it originally opened. So here's my open. Okay, here is my close. Right here at the top, so that straight horizontal line. Remember, horizontal line is where it open and close. And then my wick here is the highest it's been. And it's kind of messing up on me. But this is where the highest price has been within that one minute time frame. Okay, it opened here. It closed up here, ties it right here. And that tells you the anatomy of the candlestick. Now, why is this important? I promise you, I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna start talking about support and resistance. We're gonna talk about break and retest strategy and how it's all formed by using the candles. And I can't go into that until you understand the anatomy of the candle. So let's go ahead and look into support and resistance. And we're gonna look at some trend lines and how trends are started. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, so now we're looking at a downtrend. How is a downtrend formed? You may look from left to right and notice that, yes, price is trending downward. But let's talk about the ingredients of a downtrend. A downtrend consists of lower highs and lower lows. Let me explain. To left top corner, where that circle is, that's our high, because that's the highest where price has been at that point. It drops down. This is our low. Now, this part here, the third circle, is our lower high. Now it's called a lower high because it's lower than that high, okay? So we're connecting the dots from our highs and we're connecting the dots from our lows. So that's a lower high because it's lower than the previous high. This is a lower low. It's called a lower low because it's lower than this previous low and so on and so forth. That's the ingredients of a downtrend. Remember, lower highs, lower lows. And we continue that pattern, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low, and lower high, so on and so forth, okay? Those are the ingredients of a downtrend. Now, I want you to catch something here. The ingredients for any trend is that the impulse moves are stronger and are more frequent. Let me show you what I mean. Here is an impulse move. Now, it's impulsive because it's more frequent and it's harder than the other direction. So it's more harder because it's a downtrend. Look at this one here. It's a lot stronger. There's more uh, candles going to the downside. There's more red candles than there are white candles. There's more red candles than there are white candles. So on and so forth. And it's more stronger and more frequent than the opposite end. Now look at this here. The pullbacks are minimal. What is a pullback? The pullback is when it goes the opposite direction. It goes up. So we have white candles that are pushing it up, but you know what? It doesn't go as high as the highest high. Look at this pullback here. They're minimal. This pullback, it's minimal than the initial impulsive move. This is very minimal here, very minimal. So that's the ingredients of a downtrend. You're gonna have minimal pullbacks, and then the push to the downside are gonna be more stronger and more frequent. Now let's look at an uptrend. We have higher highs and higher lows. This is what I mean. Here's our low, here's our high, here is our higher low. 
Now it's our higher low because it's higher than the previous low. Here's our higher high because it's higher than the previous high. Our higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. That's the ingredients of an uptrend, okay? So the ingredients for any trend is that the impulsive moves are stronger and more frequent, just like the other one. And our pullbacks are minimal. Here's the example. Our impulse moves are stronger, stronger, very hard push to the upside, and look at our pullbacks. Very minimal, very minimal. And it makes absolute sense, right? You're gonna have a stronger push upward in an uptrend than you will in a downtrend. So let's look at this here. I'm gonna show you a particular strategy where to enter at. So let's say we have a strong push, impulsive push to the upside. We have a pullback. Look at this here. I can draw a straight line where it's at, okay? Where price is at. Look at these two circles here. That pullback went to the same place as the original high, okay? So that high went straight to the same price to where that lower low is, a straight line. And then we have an impulsive move, a pullback, and where did it pull back to? The same place. It's called a retest because it's retesting the same price or the same area. So that leads me to support and resistance. What is support and resistance? Here's a support also known as the floor. Now look at the bottom of that line here. Think of support as holding up, supporting. When you think of support, you think about holding up like crutches. Crutches are meant to help hold you up as you walk. Uh, think about when you're supporting a child, you're assisting or helping that child, okay? So think of it as the floor, that's the bottom line. And then resistance is the top known as the ceiling in which it bounces off. So resistance is like resistant, okay? So whenever price goes up, you're expecting it to move down. Whenever it hits support, you're expecting it to move up. So this can help us predict where price is going and when to buy and when to sell. So we have candles forming going up, starting from the support up to the resistance, doesn't quite hit the top and that's completely fine, comes back down. And guess what? Price comes back down to that support, that floor. Now, because I know that this is a support and resistance zone, I may wanna buy right here. And if I buy, guess what? Price goes up and I profit. Price comes up, touches the resistance zone. Notice how the resistance zone is blocking it. So if I know that's resistance, a higher chance that I can sell and profit. So as price drops and I sell, I can make money. So this is called support and resistance zones. Now this isn't just on your chart. You have to actually draw it and you have to use your eye to determine where support and resistance is. And I'll show you how to do that. So as price moves up, it's being supported by that support and it's going in between that area here, your floor and your ceiling. Now notice that last green candle. It's slightly outside of the ceiling and that's completely okay because ultimately that candle is still within that, that rectangle of support and resistance. So because I know that's a resistance area, I may sell. And guess what I profit? I may buy and I will profit. So notice how price is bouncing off the floor and the ceiling. That gives you a good indication of when you can buy and when you can sell. This is also known as a range or consolidation. So when price bounces off your support and resistance zone continuously, that's called a range or consolidation, okay? And it helps us when to buy or when to sell. Sometimes we may even see wicks poking through the barriers. Now, remember I told you what wicks are. These are just perfect candles that I created for you, but you may see wicks coming out of the candle like that, and that's fine. If it's outside of the floor or outside of the ceiling, that's still fine because typically it's still within that area of range, okay? Now, let's go ahead and draw our own support and resistance zone, okay? So when we look at a chart, we don't know where support and resistance zones are, but I'm going to train your eye to find them. Okay, here's my support in this area, and here is my resistance zone. Out of all of that chart, I'm just gonna take this chunk here and find my support resistance zone. Now, eventually, price is gonna break through the ceiling or break through the floor, but for the most part, we're gonna find our support resistance zone, okay? Why is this my support resistance zone? Because I notice candles are respecting that area. It's bouncing off of it multiple times, right? That's my ceiling. 
So when price comes to that area, I know that there is a higher percentage that price will go down, which gives me the opportunity to sell. Now look at my support. Price is at this area. It hasn't shot below it multiple times. So I know when it's usually around that area, I can buy. OK, so that's support and resistance in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and find more support and resistance zones within this chart. I'm going to draw a line right here for my support and right here for my resistance. Now, notice how price broke through the previous ceiling and then it starts a new support and resistance right here. So we see price going up and going down. It's ranging or consolidating. Right. So it becomes predictable to the point where I may know where to buy or sell until eventually it will break through. So this is an uptrend. It will range, break through, range, break through, and so on and so forth. So price has broke through finally, and guess what? Here's my new resistance. It comes down, here's my new support. So now I can buy and sell multiple times again. Here's where the price is at. I may buy, and look, price goes right to where previous resistance was at. What a coincidence. You will find this very often in an uptrend or a downtrend. So look at that straight line, okay? In other words, my previous resistance equals my future support or my current support. In other words, my previous ceiling becomes my current floor. And it gives me predictability when to buy. So I may buy right where my current floor is. And this is called a break and retest. You know why? Because it is going to the upside, breaking through the ceiling, and then retesting to where price was at before. Notice how those two circles is where price was at before. And I can draw a straight line. So my previous resistance is now my current support. And guess what? Price shoots up comes back down, retest that same area. And I can draw a straight line and continue to buy until it eventually will run out and become a downtrend. All right, guys, so I want to remind you to hit that like button if you haven't already and subscribe. Make sure you save this to your YouTube playlist so that you can come back and revisit and then share this so other people who are looking to learn technical analysis can also learn. We really appreciate you guys. We take a lot of time into these animations and just to teach you guys as simple as possible so that you can grasp it the best way you can. So guys, that leads me to trend lines. What are trend lines? Trend lines are drawn on a chart to help a trader determine the direction of price from a point in time. Traders may also use trend lines to help pinpoint buying or selling areas. Guys, this is one of my favorite topics here. All right, guys, so we're looking at the weekly chart and we're gonna look at the Great Britain pound versus the United States dollar. Here's my fake chart. And on the right side of the chart, we're gonna have our price, like I showed you in the previous slide. And at the bottom, we're gonna have our months, okay? It's like a graph. That's all that is, it's a graph of telling you where price is at and where it's going and where it's been, okay? Here's my demonstration of trend lines, okay? We have our low connected to our high. Price will pull back to our higher low. Then it will go to our higher high, to our higher low, and guess what? It retests back to our previous high, giving us a straight line. And it tells us where we may want to buy. We buy on the higher lows in an uptrend and draw your trend line connecting both lows, just like that. Now, sometimes our lows may not connect exactly, but you want to grab your trend line to the lowest of the lows and try to grab as many higher lows as possible. And then as price continue to move to the upside, it gives us indication where we want to buy at. We want to try to buy closer to the trend line as possible. And that's known as our support trend line. So here's another illustration here. We're going to, one, identify at least two lows, then connect your trend line. Here's our two lows right here. And then price will go up. So here's our trend line. We don't quite know exactly what's going to happen. Number two, we're going to wait for the impulsive move. Here's our impulsive move. Number three, then wait for the pullback to close near the trend line. And as it pulls back, we go to number four, then enter the buy on or near the trend line. Right here is where we're going to enter our buy. And then five, we're going to collect your profits as price continue to move to the upside.
Confluence. Confluence simply means multiple confirmations giving us a reason to buy or sell. This is what I mean. Here's our two lows. We're going to connect our trend line. Price shoots up, comes down to our trend line. Remember, that gives us the indication to buy. I'm going to draw a line. Price is right where the previous resistance at, and it's where our horizontal support is and our vertical support, which is our trend line. Because it's where price was at before in the past, which was our resistance, and it's currently on our vertical support line, that gives us confluence that price is more likely going to move to the upside. And it pulls back down and continues up. Guess what? Here's where price was at before. There's our break and retest. We will buy here and it continues to push to the upside. Same here. We see price comes and pull back down to where our previous resistance is, and then we can continue to buy. And that's all that is, guys. Now we're going to talk about technical indicators. When you hear the term indicator, it is simply just a pattern that gives you a signal as to when you should enter a trade. Now you don't want to rely solely on the indicator to help you get into the market. You want to use it as confluence. And when I say confluence, we're simply referring to extra confirmation. So let me show you exactly how I would apply an indicator. And I'm going to discuss some of the most common indicators that a trader would use. Now there's all types. There are momentum indicators, there are trend indicators, there are volatility indicators, but I'm only gonna go through a few just to give you an idea of how you would apply a technical indicator. So Brian talked about support and resistance. I'm on the daily chart of Euro AUD. And let me show you how I would approach the market based on where the price is right now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna identify the trend. So as you can see, the price has been moving upward in the past. It has given us a pullback on this daily chart. So here was our flag, okay? So this would be a flag. So we had an impulse to the upside. Brian went over that, impulse, correction, continuation. So we had an impulse, a correction, and now you can see we had a continuation. And now the price is dropping again. So would you say that we are in an uptrend or would you say that we're in a downtrend? Well, it really just depends on how you're following the structure of the market. So this is gonna be a bit subjective to some people. I like to use a 50 period moving average, for example. This would be an example of an indicator. So I like to use the 50 period moving average, which these are just called moving averages. And there's different periods that you can use on a moving average. When I say period, if I click on the settings of this tool in trading view, you will notice that I'm using a 50 and close moving average. Now there's uh, moving averages that go by the 100 length or the 200 length and simply what this number does is it measures the last 50 candles for example if i was using 100 ma it would measure the last 100 candles and it pretty much smooths out the price so over the last 50 candles it pretty much tells me what the market has been doing okay so people will use this for entries they'll use it for exits they'll use it for trend trading in this case i like to use it for confluence of the trend that I'm trading on a particular time frame, such as if I'm trading the daily, then if I am assuming that this is in a downtrend and I want to look for an opportunity to sell, then as long as price remains under the 50 period moving average, I'm going to look for the opportunity to sell. If price is above the 50 period moving average, for example, then I will look for the opportunity to buy. For example, here is an area of resistance that became future support. And notice that once the market was resistance here it rejected to the downside it was resistance here it rejected to the downside and in the future this resistance area also became support and this became a buying signal for us to buy in that trend now transitioning into an uptrend so we went from a downtrend into an uptrend and as long as price stayed above my 50 period moving average then that was a signal that i would keep buying the market so that is one indicator for example that you can use and again the type of indicator that you use in terms when it comes to a moving average is going to depend on your style of trading so the reason why i like the 50 period moving average is that i like to scalp an intraday trade and i'm a very short-term swing trader i don't like holding trades for a very long time unless i'm trading significant price levels where the price is at a major discount 
You'll learn that stuff over time if you haven't already. But this is just an example of one indicator. Let me show you another popular indicator, and that would be Bollinger Bands. I really like Bollinger Bands, and I'm going to show you this is how it looks. And what a Bollinger Band is, is simply an indicator that has a moving average in the middle. So you'll see that white line in the middle, okay? I just went over moving averages and told you exactly what they do. So the Bollinger Band has a moving average in the middle. It also has a upper band. This upper band is the red band. And this is a signal to us when the price is deeply overbought. So what I mean by overbought is, notice how this price was moving upward, okay? And eventually it came to an area where buyers struggle to keep pushing that price higher. So this signal to us that once the price moves outside of the Bollinger Band, the price is overbought. And it's a signal that, you know what, the price just might start to turn around at some point, which it did here. So anytime you see wicks, for example, outside of the Bollinger Band, notice how the price rejected and it declined to the downside. It rejected and declined to the downside. So I like Bollinger Bands. They're very reliable and consistent. They're not 100% and no indicator is, but they are a really good confirmation that you can use along with price action to help you get into a trade. Let me show you another way of how I would have used the Bollinger Band in this particular setup right now. So Brian talked about support and resistance. I'm going to show you an example of drawing support and resistance on Euro AUD. So notice that this is where the price is right now, where my crosshair is. And below price, I'm just gonna mark a level of support. So this would be my level of support. This is our floor, okay? This is where the price is holding up. So notice that the price is bouncing off of this area, and this is what we would call our support. So I'm simply going to mark that as my support. And now I'm gonna clone this zone, and I'm gonna find an area of resistance where I could simply find an opportunity to possibly sell in the market, okay? So let's go ahead and clone this. And then we are going to find our area of resistance. Now, why am I highlighting this area? So remember, when you are looking for support and resistance, you want to find areas where it was a cluster of support and also resistance, because those are the areas where the market is most likely to reverse and turn around. So notice here, it was support, it was support, it was support a number of times, it was support, it was support, it was resistance and now it is rejecting off of this area as resistance. Now, because price is making lower lows and lower highs, for example, I'm going to be looking for the opportunity to sell. Now we did go above that area right there. So price broke above our high right here. And this could have been a signal that, you know what, the price might push the opposite direction, but it did come back down again. So I will say that we're still in a downtrend. Now, if I apply, for example, my Bollinger Band, when the price is at the bottom of the band, you're going to look to buy, okay? So notice here, this is support. Notice how the price fell and retested support. Notice how price is sticking outside of the Bollinger Band and the price moved upward. Where did it stop? It stopped at our resistance. And let's just measure how many pips this is. So from this support to this resistance, that is about 160 pips. So if you were trading a dollar a pip, which you'll learn if you haven't already, then 160 pips would be $160 if you were trading a dollar a pip. So that is just another example of how you can use an indicator like Bollinger Bands to get into a trade. So notice that when I got into this trade and I started with a naked chart, no indicators at all, nothing, just price, just the candles, right? First thing I did was I identified my trend. So I identified my trend and I pretty much have a downtrend, okay? After I said that, I then said, where are my high probability areas where I can buy and sell, where the market is likely to go in reverse? Well, this is an area right here. This is support. And we already identified that right above it is also an area that we could use to sell, okay? So we are gonna find an area on our chart, for example, that serves as both support and resistance, all right? And that's our resistance right there. And we already went over why we would focus on this area as a good place to possibly sell. We could have bought from the bottom of the Bollinger Band, and this is a very strong level where the price is most likely to reverse. The only thing is that 
on this daily time frame, we would have been trading against the trend. So we would have been trading against this downtrend and we would have been going against the trend. So it is a good opportunity in my opinion though, because notice there is no price action down here below the level and it's more than likely that buying pressure would come in after sellers have had charge for some time. So that is one way that you can use indicators i hope that that gives you an understanding of just how to apply technical analysis using indicators to your chart and i'm sure that you will figure out which indicator is best for you over time All right, guys, so that was a lot of information to digest, and I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying this. Uh, be sure to take notes, and like I said, to save this to your trading playlist because I want this to be in your rotation if you ever forget any information. But guys, one easy way for you to trade using technical analysis is chart patterns. Chart patterns are really fun because they repeat itself over and over again. There are a ton of chart patterns, but there is one in particular that I want you guys to learn, and I think is a very easy way to find setups it will help you to enter with confidence. It will help you to exit with confidence. And so I want you guys to take notes of this as well. I'll try to make this as easy as possible. And I want you guys to drop in the comments right now if you have any questions about it, or even if you're familiar with this, and it's called double tops and double bottoms. I will show you how to do that. And all the information that we've given you in this video here is leading up to this here, is finding these patterns here over and over again using technical analysis. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so double tops and double bottoms. I'm going to go ahead and show you double tops first here. What you want to do when you're finding a double top is that you want to see when price retests a certain area twice. So that's where the word double comes from. And what I mean by this here is that this here is our resistance zone. And we learned about support and resistance. This is our resistance zone. And I want you guys to get this here. Right here is our double tops. Here's our first one here. And then you'll see a gap. And here's our second one. Now this gap is, is very significant right here. This is our neckline. And I know some of you guys are saying, well, I see multiple candles reaching this area. Here's one, here's two, come back up three, four, five, and that's completely fine. What I'm talking about is that you wanna see a gap in between that before it retests this resistance zone, okay? So here's our double top pattern. Now, instead of price coming up, we're making uh, higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and then higher lows, we are failing to make a new higher high and instead of price going to make a new higher high for an uptrend it actually comes back to retest this resistance zone only to drop to the downside and this is a very popular strategy here now all of this is saying is that buyers couldn't keep that momentum up for the uptrend and sellers come to dominate so this here is considered a key area right so you typically will see a nice gap in between your double tops here, this is your neckline here. So that is considered a double top here, all right? So this is a key resistance zone. So if price ever comes back to that area, you know there's a possibility that you can short again. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean here. So we have price shoot up to the upside, is making a higher low. Now, if we're in an uptrend, we may think that it will continue to make higher highs. But if you see price break down to the downside, and if it breaks this neck right here, then there is a strong possibility that you may be headed into a downtrend. All right, so let me go ahead and show you a double bottom, and then I'm gonna show you how I would enter it once I identify our double tops and our double bottoms. All right, guys, so this here would be considered a double bottom. I'm going to draw this out for you to make it easier for you to, to watch here. Now, it doesn't have to be specific price. It just needs to be a specific area here. So we can see that candles came and retested this triangle here at the top of this triangle. And then at the same time, it came back down and it passed through it here. All right, so this here is our double bottom. I'm going to circle it to make it easier. So we have one right here and two down here. All right, this is our support zone. So when you're looking to buy here for, for double bottoms, we're looking for support zone right here, okay? So we have price coming to the downside here. It came back, it shot up, right? And instead of price coming down and continuing our downtrend, going further down, it actually stopped at our support zone, right? And once we see that, we have an idea that price will continue to shoot up. That's our double bottom. All that simply means is that this is a key area of 
support. So all this is saying is that buyers and sellers have agreed upon a price, right? Sellers came down, they let go of their positions, buyer took control, sellers became dominant again, hit this part of the bottom here, and then buyers shot to the upside here. So this is a key area of support. Now, one way you can actually trade this here is to look for the neckline here, okay? And what I mean by that, we wanna find our resistance zone. So here is our resistance zone here, that's considered our neckline. And the reason why is because at this area, price shot down, came back up, retested it multiple times, shot back down to the support, okay? So how we would typically enter it, since we don't know at this particular time that we are in a double bottom, we wait for price to shoot up, and this is how I enter the trade. I will wait for price to shoot up, and then it breaks through. Remember, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen at that point. It breaks through, it comes and pull back to the downside, and this will be my entry zone at the neckline here, okay? You wanna make sure you set your stop loss away from structure, away from here, and that's, we'll go into that in a bit, but this will be my entry zone because every time price breaks a structure and it pulls back to that structure, nine times out of 10, it will bounce up and continue an upside, okay? So we were in a downtrend over here on the left side of the screen, and then sellers became exhausted. It shot back up. Instead of continuing to lower lows, it stopped here at the support. It broke our neckline to the upside right here, and then it came back down to retest our neckline here. Now it's our support. So remember in the part of the video earlier, we talked about our neckline here, okay? So that's also the same as our break and retest. So remember our break and retest strategy, and then we're gonna go ahead and clean this up a bit. Our break and retest strategy is simply when price goes one way, right? It comes and breaks our resistance zone in this case here. Price goes up this way here, it comes back down, retest, so it broke our resistance, came back down to retest, and it continues to the upside. This is where you would buy at. The same thing. So I use the break and retest strategy for my double tops and my double bottoms. All right, so that is a key way. That's a way that I like to trade my double tops and double bottoms is when price break the neckline, come back and retest that neckline, enter a buy at this area, and guess what? It continued to the upside. Now I probably would have exited around this price here. This is our minor resistance level because price retested this area multiple times before it shot back down to this neckline. So I would have taken profit. I would have bought around this area and take it profit right here at this resistance zone. And guess what? It shot up higher to the upside. And guess what? It approached our major resistance zone here. So what I mean by major resistance zone, right here. So if I grab this here, and I take it all the way across where price retested multiple times. We can see multiple candles retest in that area. And I'll circle this for you so you can easily identify it. Multiple candles here, multiple candles here. If I move over to the right, multiple candles here. All of these is a strong structure of resistance. And it's not by coincidence, okay? I want you guys to understand this market like any other market, and I mentioned this before, is that the reason why price stop at certain areas is because it's beginning to become overbought. That is the idea of our support and resistance zone. Price always comes back and retests our support and resistance zones. So that's why it's really important to understand how to draw your support and resistance areas before you can even start trading. All right, so let's Let's go ahead and look at a completely different pair and we'll apply let's say the double top to this next pair and see if we can find the exact same setup where we identify a double top we're going to identify the neckline and then use our break and retest strategy that i mentioned earlier for that particular chart pattern all right guys so we have our double tops here okay now sometimes it can be a little confusing identifying this especially if you're a new trader but the whole point is that you want to see at least a gap a small gap in between your double tops and your double bottoms okay and then typically you will have a trend when you're starting to look for these you will find it in a trend and that is typically a trend reversal i want to get that out there okay it's kind of a, a trend reversal when you see something like this uh you can find this on any time frame four hour daily eight hour 15 minutes it doesn't matter um, and so you will see this as a trend reversal now the lower time frames it may be a smaller trend reversal um, on the higher time frame it's a larger trend reversal okay so let me show you what I'm talking about here all right so we have our downtrend this is our lows our higher our highs and then we have our higher lows our higher highs higher lows 
higher highs. And then this here, it meets at the same area, right? So it didn't make a higher low yet. It actually dropped back down to the previous higher high. And so that's where the key is at, okay? So we have a strong push to the upside. It came back to retest. And then it shot up back to this area here, to our resistance area, okay? So that is our double top. It doesn't matter the candles that are next to it, right? You wanna see this strong gap here, okay? So this here can be our neckline. Let me go ahead and grab this rectangle tool here. All right, so this here is our neckline here. So we have our higher low, our higher high, a higher low, higher high. It failed to make a higher low. It actually retested our previous higher high. It shot back up, hit our resistance zone, and then it comes back here, okay? So typically what you wanna do, we wanna find our break and retest, okay? So it shot down because it can do one or two things. Once it comes back and retest this area right here, it can come back up for a triple top. And there is something called a triple top or even a triple bottom, but it could do that. And if so, I can guarantee you that it will bounce off of this resistance zone. I can't say guarantee in trading, but there's a high probability that it will come back and retest that resistance zone, okay? But if not, before you enter for that buy, because it may not come back up, you want to wait to see what will happen. In this case, it came down right here and it broke past our support zone and it came back and retested our support zone, making it resistance. That's where you would get in, in a downtrend, okay? So our uptrend has officially ended when it broke our neckline, our line here. That was our previous support. And it broke it, came back up, and now it's starting to make lower lows and lower highs. Remember the ingredients for our downtrend and our uptrend? And now look, lower lows, lower highs, so on and so forth. So now we are looking at the ingredient of our downtrend. So when you're looking at a double top, you want to see if it's going to retest the neckline. And after it retests the neckline, before you enter for a buy, you want to see if it's going to continue to break through like it did. If it does, nine times out of 10, it will come back up and retest that neckline now going the opposite direction and look it shot slightly above it and that's completely fine you want to have your stop loss somewhere around this area here where you know it may not come in retest because now it's starting to form a, a lower lows and lower highs okay so i would sell here and you can actually sell all the way down to this area here where it wicked before or if you're at the beginning of a trend you can get out and you always want to look left for clues. Look at this area here where this was a lower low. You know it's going to come and retest that area as well. So the purpose of a double top and a double bottom or even triple tops and triple bottoms is that there's a possible trend reversal and you want to use the break and retest strategy. At least that's what I found profitable every single time I use that particular strategy. Now, like I said in the beginning of this segment here, you can find tons of chart patterns, but this here is one of my favorite ones that Kenya and I use all the time when we see the setting up. All right, guys, so everything that we have learned throughout this video is all about right now. We're gonna talk about the four stages of trading and everything that we've actually learned is all about this here. So once you identify what stage you're in, trading becomes a lot easier. So let's look into it. The four stages of trading consist of the accumulation stage or phase, the markup slash advancing phase, and sometimes people may interchange these words, but it's either the markup stage or the advancing stage. And then we have the distribution stage, and finally, the markdown slash declining stage, okay? Very simple, guys. Now, this can change the way you trade, right? So this is how the huge banks, the hedge funds, those who actually move the markets, they actually look at it like this. This phase or these stages are always like this in every single chart that you look at. Now, sometimes these stages may not be exactly perfect as far as the perfect trend, but overall, every market has this. Let me show you what I mean and I will break it down. So right here, we have a chart of EuroCAD. We're looking on the weekly. Now look on the left, the top left here. 
This right here is the distribution stage. Now the distribution stage always happen after an uptrend, okay? You will see your resistance here, you will see your support here, and notice you see price moving up and down throughout this area, okay? And now this is the distribution stage. The reason why price is moving up and down this area is because buyers and sellers are trying to figure out which way price is going to move. Now imagine price has been climbing all the way up and now it hits this distribution stage. What do you think is the logical way price is going to go? Okay. Now I want you to think of it like this. And I always tell our students this in our academy. If you had a, a product, you were a CEO of a huge shoe company and you were looking to bring in buyers. Okay. So you brought the price all the way down to a nice sale. It brought in a whole bunch of buyers and now you are marking up the price, okay? You marked up the price because you brought in a whole bunch of buyers and now you are capped out at your price. So you've been in an uptrend for so long, now the buyers are starting to leave because you marked up the price. What are you gonna do? You are going to drop the price down. And that leads me to the markdown stage, okay? So we're at the distribution stage, and then we go to the markdown stage. The markdown stage is when you're making lower highs and you're making lower lows. So you start having your downtrend, okay? So it's important when you're trading to go to the higher time frame like the daily, the weekly, or the monthly, and just to find out where you're at when you're trading. The distribution stage, the markdown, or the markdown stage. Now let's go ahead and look at the accumulation stage and the markup stage. So right after your downtrend, you come to an area where you see those red lines at. You are at the accumulation stage, okay? And once you're at the accumulation stage, that happens right after a downtrend, okay? So think about it. Buyers and sellers are trying to figure out what's going on, and they reach this area here called support and resistance. Now, remember in the beginning of the video, we talked about a range or consolidation. That's the exact same thing when price is moving up and down at resistance and at support. So think of it like this. You're looking to bring in buyers to your shoes, right? In order to bring in buyers, you have to drop the price. You're putting your shoes on sale to bring in more buyers. Once you put the shoes on sale, where is price going to go? The logical place that price is going to go is upward, right? That's the markup phase. So whenever you have something for cheap or for sale, you're attracting buyers. You want them to buy low. So now that they've bought low, you're attracting buyers, price begins to go upward. So just like this market, you're going to look at this like every other market, the grocery market, the shoe market, the clothing market, the real estate market. Whenever price is cheap, you bring in more buyers. Whenever it's too expensive, you have to bring down the price to bring in more buyers. This is it, guys. Everything that we've been learning from the beginning of this video to here all comes down to the four stages. So I want you guys to do a quick exercise after this video or even now if you pause it, find three pairs and I want you to go to the higher time frame, the daily or the weekly, and find out which phase are you in. Are you in the middle of the up phase? Are you actually in the accumulation stage? Are you in the distribution stage or the markdown stage? Now you have an advantage knowing what stage you're in. If you're in the accumulation stage, you know price has nowhere else to go but up. So you have to distinguish how far price has been going down before you can actually buy. And we have strategies with that. And a part of that is the double bottom or the triple bottom that we talked about. When you see price going up, hitting the resistance, coming back down to support, that means that the buyers and sellers are trying to negotiate. In this example, where the accumulation stage, where the sellers became exhausted, they were pushing forcefully on the left side to that downtrend, and then they exhausted themselves out. Now they're negotiating with buyers and then buyers take over. That's all these charts consist of. You have a downtrend and then you have buyers and sellers negotiating and then you have an uptrend and then you have buyers and sellers negotiating. Then you have a downtrend, buyers and sellers negotiating and then an uptrend and that's all it does. Now your uptrend, your accumulation stage, your distribution stage and your markdown stage, they may not look as pretty as this, but overall, that's the gist of this particular market. So finally, we're gonna put all of this together, wrap it up, and then you should have the fundamental basics of technical analysis. All right, guys, so we are at the end. I wanna congratulate you guys for completing this course. Now, those who skipped, shame on you because there's a lot of content behind you that I think will definitely benefit you. But I'm sure most of you guys have gotten to this point because you've completed from the beginning to this point. Now we're gonna put everything together, everything that you've learned from the anatomy of the candlestick, identifying support and resistance zones, marking your trend line, and then executing based on all of that stuff using technical analysis. So let's get into it.
All right, so let's look at this complicated looking chart. It looks complicated. We see a lot of candles. We don't know what to do. Let's first start off with this. We're looking at the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen. You'll see that on the left top. And then we're trading the daily time frame. We always say to look at the higher time frame because we want to determine what trend we are in. That is the basis of your entry. If you can identify your trend, it will make it your entry a lot simpler. Okay. So on the higher time frame, where do we start? You know what? It doesn't hurt to go even higher. So I'm going on the weekly chart. I'm going to scrunch up my chart just a bit. And I noticed something here. I noticed this peak here. Why is that peak there? Another thing you want to do once you identify something like this, where all the rest of the price action is down here, is that you want to uh, see what's going on. You want to scroll left. So I'm going to scroll left. Ah, right here. Okay. So once you find out what happened in the past at that point, it can help you to determine what's going to happen in the future. So watch this. I'm going to grab my rectangle right here. And this is right where price stopped. It's not a coincidence, guys. Let me educate you on some knowledge here, okay? Just some fundamentals. All right, so the basics of a market, any market, whether if it's your real estate market or even your grocery market, is that you have to have buyers. That's what moves your economy, is when you have buyers, when you have money circulating. So if price has been going all the way up here in the past, and it needs to bring in buyers, let's say the buyers are very few, you need to bring in sellers okay so if you want to have more buyers come in you have to drop the price in order to bring in more buyers think about your grocery store i say this all the time i sound like a broken record in our academy but if you want to buy something and it's too expensive that grocery store needs to put it on sale once you put it on sale more buyers are going to flock to it and when you have a lot of people buying something uh now it's a supply and demand issue where they have a lot of supply they have a lot of demand and so in order to keep that up they have to mark the price up and then fewer people will start buying right so they're still making good money because they mark the price up now alongside of this here keep that in the back of your mind is that that's what happened here so if we look here on back in december 2000 and 14 price was in this area here now again in the future price is there again and this is here and this here is in let's say september 2022 all right from this point price has shot down because it needs to bring in new buyers now that it has shot down let's see if we are in a downtrend let's scroll down to the daily time frame this is called top down analysis when you start from the high time frame and then you head your way downward okay so now that we establish that we are at an all time high, let's see if the ingredients of a downtrend applies. Let's delete this here. I'm going to grab my my marker here. So we have a high. Let's see if you guys remember the ingredients of a downtrend. All right. We have a low right here. We have a lower high because it's lower than this high. OK, um, let me scrunch this up a bit. All right. And then we have a low price comes back up here but look it retests this area right here okay all right so watch this here let me get my rectangle tool and i'm going to highlight this area right here all right so remember we're looking for peaks and we're looking for points that's a turning area in the market those who move the market sell there or buy there okay so this here we see a lot of wicks poking through here we see wicks poking through and then it reverses so this is a peak or a bottom, I'm sorry, it shoots up, a bottom shoots up, a bottom, and it's all within this zone. That's why I highlight this with a red rectangle because it helps me to identify it easily. And guess what, at that same zone, right? And I can even pull this up a bit because that's where, this is all the zone here on the weekly time frame or on the daily time frame. This right here, it did the same thing and it's starting to shoot down. So we have a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high so what are we missing in the equation we're missing a lower low okay so that is one way we can predict what's going to happen we need to have a lower low so that means i need to sell at a lower high so we're at a lower high now this would be a good opportunity to sell and you can see it already started making its way down okay now let's zoom out a bit now what we'll do is get our trend line get it from the top and we're going to connect it to the next point okay this is the next point i can't bring it down here where this point is at because we know that we need to have room for the downtrend to remain all right now before this point even occurred let me move my chart over a bit 
this is how you would have probably drawn your trend line, right? It would have looked something like this and it connected in the points. But as price began to move and consolidate, it shot up a bit. So now we're just adjusting our trend line out further. Now we're looking for a lower low. So right here would be a good place to sell. And I would sell from here down to at least right here. Now, why right here? Because this proved to me in the past, this was a good support zone. Now, if we're in an ultimately in a downtrend, we can probably count on it going down even further, but a safe zone would be a nice support area right here. Now watch this, I'm gonna get my measuring tool. So where price is at now, it's about here. Let's say it's about 300 pips. That's not bad. It will probably take a couple of weeks, maybe a month or so to get that, but you are just sitting in a trade. You don't have to watch it all the time. If you work not a nine to five, this will be a good idea. This is called swing trading. You're holding your, your trades uh, within a few weeks to a few months, that's position trading. If you're holding your trade within a day or a few weeks, that's a swing trade. So you can understand that I use price action to determine what I'm gonna do. I didn't use an indicator at all. Now, Kenya talked about indicators. She One of them that she mentioned was the 50-day moving average. So I'm gonna throw that on here, all right? And price is hovering above the 50 day moving average. Now she mentioned that when price is above, like candles are above the 50 day moving average, you're in an uptrend. When it's below, you're in a downtrend. That is not 100% true. It's true for the, the big idea, but not 100% true. We All it does is just smooths out the last 50 days and it makes it a straight line. So all of these candles here, all of this noise, it just smooths it out here, right? And that's what it's doing. So for example here, as price was going here, price was below the moving average, right? But if it's below, we should be selling, not necessarily true. All we're doing is looking at it smooth out. And now we can see that it curved and it's heading down. So it's telling us that it's a downtrend because we're looking at the smoothness of the line, not necessarily price under or above that line. In some cases you can do that, but not all cases. So we're clearly in a downtrend because we have lower highs and lower lows. Now we're looking to profit from our lower high right here to our lower low and maybe even further, right? So that's how you use your candles, your price action, your trend lines, your support and resistance, all of that together, okay? And I'm gonna break it down a little bit further here before we close. Now, here is our uh, resistance. Remember our ceiling right there? Here's our ultimate ceiling. Now look at this price action right here. Let's dissect it a bit. All right, so as price was moving in the past, it shot down, it was support. It shot down, support. It shot down, support. Support number of times, all within this area. That tells us right there that this area is significant. Eventually it broke down. Now we have a new support. And then it shot up from our previous support. Now it's resistance. So remember, our floor is now our ceiling. And it came back down, our floor, our ceiling, our floor, our ceiling. Now we're at the ceiling, what's gonna happen? Nine times out of 10, it's going to hit our floor. So I'm looking at the big picture. I'm looking at a whole bunch of technical analysis. I'm looking at price action. That's why it's important to draw your trend lines correctly. It's important to identify your support and resistance because there's a high probability if you do that, you will become a successful trader all the time. Guys, that concludes this video. Before we do anything, I wanna congratulate you on completing everything. I want you to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button, comment, because it takes us a lot of time to put this material out, and a lot of effort, a lot of information, a lot of research, and we hope that you benefit from that. And I'm sure that there are other people in the future who would like to benefit from that too. So that helps us to get these videos out to them by simply liking and comment. Guys, we truly appreciate you. If you need your handheld and you've been looking for your handheld for a long time and you trust us and you know we've been on YouTube for a while and we're consistently profitable with a 95% signal win rate with our academy, then it's about time for you to do that. I want you to send us an email in the description below at the hello email at the description 
and ask us for a coupon code, I will give that to you just because you are eager to learn. And I will guarantee you, if you join our community, you will become successful. If you stick with it, stay committed. I promise you that, okay? I can't promise you if you do not stick with it and stay committed. You guys, enjoy your day. Thank you for hanging with me for this hour and you have a blessed day. Take care. Thank you.